Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program with you, the radio listeners, at any point in time. During this half-hour broadcast, you can pick up your phones, dial the number 281-837-2222 with any Bible questions or comments that you'd like to make concerning God's Word, and we will give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your questions and listen to your comments as well. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to John chapter 8. We're going to deal with the second part of our subject from last week, and that subject is entitled, The True Children of Abraham. The True Children of Abraham. I want to begin the reading, if I could, uh, at verse number 37 of our Bibles of John. Uh, the chapter is number 8. John chapter 8 and 37. The Bible said, this is Jesus speaking, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen, Jesus said, with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if he were, if you were Abraham's children you would do the works of Abraham. Again, we're dealing with the second part of the true children of Abraham. The number is 281-837-2222 for anyone who has any calls. Uh, they'd like to make questions and comments they'd like to make as well. Now, before we go further into uh, our subject, last week we had a caller who wanted to know, is it wrong to have song leaders. Is that right? Song leaders. They also wanted to know if children worship is wrong. Uh, she said that people have freedoms and do those things go uh, uh, so what makes them wrong? Okay, let me read this again. She said that people have freedoms to do those things so what makes them wrong? Okay, let's deal with the first part of uh, this uh, caller's write-in question who wanted to know, is it wrong uh, to have uh, song leaders? And I, I know this is here, it's plural, but I mean, if we're talking an individual, which is a male, standing up, uh, leading us, directing us, getting the song uh, started in our participation of worship to God so that everyone can be on one accord, the answer to the question is no. It's not wrong to have a song leader who stands up and directs uh, the hearts of saints who are embarking on a worship service which is designed uh, to magnify and glorify God. See, we all have to understand and know what it is we're singing and be on one accord. Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 of our Bible, he says if we would be so kind... Uh, to turn there in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse number 26. He said, how is it then, brother, when you come together, every one of you have a psalm, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation. Notice what he said, let all things be done, he says in the text, unto edify. He's talking about even when there were uh, spiritual gifts uh, in, in, in the church. He wanted everything to be done. Here's the point of 1 Corinthians 14, in decency and order. Yes. And in order for it to be done in decency and order, everybody has to be on one accord. Amen. We'll drop down to verse uh, number uh, 27 of the same chapter. He says, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or three at the most, and that by course, course. and let one interpret. Notice this, by and by course. This is what I'll be, and that by course. Yes. And that by course. See. In other words, it's not a uh, multiple, it all not, and I'm telling you, there are some churches of Christ who are getting away and pulling off some foolishness. Uh, some modern day Jeroboams who wants to stand three and four guys up in front of a public assembly now, each one have a microphone, and some are booting out. Now, which one is leading? It, you don't need three or four or five, six guys standing up with microphones directing the song service. Yes. There should be one leader, one, one man who is directing, who is instructing our hearts in the performance of the worship. 
See, we got too many Church of Christ who are trying to be like denominational as well. Yeah. Grabbing microphones and, and boom, boom, booming as well uh, with their mouth and unintelligible words out of their mouth, which speaks against what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 15. And so there ought not be song leaders standing up when there's only one who could lead. Now, as far as she's talking about, and bro, and you had something on that, the number's 281 uh, 837 Yes, also in that same brother. Corinthian letter, it says, and I believe you mentioned every one of you have the psalm, have the doctrine. Yes, first Corinthians 14. Yes, at the interpretation. So that would apply to song leading as well as tongue speaking, as well as prophesying in the context is one at a time. Yes. So Michael. you would have confusion by multiple people before you all trying to be harmonious, but who's, as you said, who's leading? Who's leading? So, so they're, they're actually trying to harmonize together, but you have an issue where you just need someone, as you said, to guide and direct the song. What are we going to sing? Do we start now? What verse are we going to next? By your example, and that is sufficient. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ozan. And the number is 281-837-2222. Now, let me do, uh, Brother uh, Paul, did you have something? Brother, I got something on the floor about what you're saying right there as well. You know, with all the uh, guys that's having uh, the microphones to even speak and sing a song like that, wouldn't that be seen of other men? Is the, is, the, is, the, is the Matthew 6 talk about, 1 through 4? Like they stand on the street corner with the microphone, want to be seen by other men, uplifting one another? You know, that would be the example. So the question I think what Brother uh, Polk is dealing with is why. This is, I mean, why? this is the thing. Why would you have more than one song? Yes. What would be the purpose? purpose. Yes. And it, it defeats the purpose, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. You don't need two and three and four and five people with microphones standing up in the public assembly calling themselves leading songs. And that's what Brother uh, Polk is bringing out in Matthew uh, chapter 6. Also, I want to deal with yes. the latter Amen. part of the person's question about children's church. I believe that. Let me say this. There there is no such thing as children worship. Amen. When we come together on the first, see, I want you to think about something. Listen to me, radio listeners. If there is a children's worship, more likely than not, there is an adult that is conducting the children's worship. Yeah. That adult, whoever you may have in that back room with those children, they are not participating in the worship of God. There is no such thing as children's church. You don't find that in the Bible, children's worship. We are to all come together on the first day of the week, and we are to all worship God if you are a Christian on the first day of the week. Yes. See, we cannot start developing works that we might think is good, that, that helps out the Lord, but it violates what he has commanded you to do. Amen. And so if a, a only, a only way a work can be good is if God has determined it was good. You have to understand. You see that throughout the Bible. God determined what's a good work and what's not a good work. Uzzah put his hand to the Ark of the Covenant in 2 Samuel chapter 6, and he lost his life. Yeah. He thought it was a good work. The Ark was just stumbling. It was just falling down. He put his hand to it to try to stop it. And God struck him dead. You and I might think it was a good work. All he was doing was trying to keep it from hitting the ground. Okay. But yeah. God killed him for it. Why? Because he had no authority. Amen. A work is only good if you and I have biblical authority to, from God to show that it's a good work. The number is 281-837-2222. I think we got some callers on the line. Is that right? No calls on the line. Now, let me go back to, there was a, a, a call in from a caller last week as we talked about the true children of Abraham. And as we got on the subject of, if you're a part of a denominational church, you are not the true children of Abraham. And what we meant by that is if you are attending the Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Church of God in Christ, Mormon, the list is endless. What you have to understand is you are not a follower of Christ because of the teaching, the doctrine that is taught in those man-made organizations. Now, I want to do something real quick. I want to prove to you what I'm saying from the Bible. Ephesians chapter 4, and then I'm going to toss it real quickly. The guy called in last week, and he said, I thought I heard y'all say, and which he heard right, that if you're part of the Baptist organization, that you're lost, that you're on the wrong road. And we uh, were in the process of showing him from the Bible that is exactly what we're saying. Yes. If you are a part of that organization, 
in any other organization that's not uh, of Christ, that's not of the body of Christ, then you are on your way to hell. Now, just real quick, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, I'm going to prove something to you, and then we're going to answer the phone calls. In Ephesians 4, 4, Paul said this, there is, get this, one body, one spirit, even as you're called, and one hope of your calling. Everybody see that? Paul said there is not but one body. Now, we talked about this before. Whatever the body is, we'd all have to agree that there's only one. Is that right? If the body was a microphone, one. If the body was a T-shirt, it's one. If the body was a CD, it's one. If the body is a dollar, Paul said there is one body. That's all there is. Amen. So now, let me, let's answer the question. Let's find out what the body is. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Just go back a couple of chapters and we're going to take the phone calls to show you that if you're part of another body, then you are part of an organization that is not the true children, spiritual children of Abraham. You're on your way to a devil's hell. You've got to get into the, be a part of the one body, get into the one church that we're going to see about in the Bible. Now, what is the body? Ephesians 1.22, let the Bible answer. And had put all things under his feet. This is Paul talking about what God has done for Jesus. And had put all things under his feet and gave him, talking about Jesus, to be the head over all things to the church. There's a semicolon here, a, 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 a comma, which is his body. Y'all see that? Yes. Which is his body. The fullness of him that fill it all in all. What is the church, Paul? His body. What is the body then, Paul? The church. Now, I ask you a question. How many churches does Christ have? Mm. He only has one. Amen. How many arts were there in the Old Testament? There was one. It didn't matter how mad people got in Noah's day. If they didn't get into that one ark, when the rains came down, they died lost. Listen to me, radio listeners. They died lost. Amen. Because they didn't get into the ark, which was designed by Moses, by the pattern that God told him to design it. The number is 281-837-2222. We have some callers on the line. Go ahead, callers. You're on the air. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sitting here and I'm listening to the broadcast, and what I want to say, could you also explain why that in the Lord's Church that we all sing and that there's just not a choir that does all the singing for the whole church? Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. God bless you. Good point. Good point. Yes, uh, and the scriptures tell us that you can look at the instructions. We thank our brother. God bless him for calling us uh, with this uh, wonderful thought to address. Look at Ephesians 5.19. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So you have to speak to yourself. So, so you can't have an audience or group, part of your audience, singing while you sit there and listen and admire their skill. It says, in spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now watch this. Look over at Colossians chapter 3. Look at verse 16. The Bible says, Colossians 3, 16, that the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. See, so you admonish one another. If, they, if only the choir is doing it, they, who's going to admonish them? That, that would be ridiculous. They would be the only ones doing the singing and admonishing to us. And this is a part of an entertainment venue that Amen. stems from the denominational churches. He says, whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. And remember something also, we don't let anyone else give for us, do we? We don't let anyone else teach and then accept someone else teaches and then we let someone else speak for us and say, yeah, uh, you like the message, he liked the message. We say amen or we uh, obey and, and show our acknowledgement. We don't let anyone pray for us to where we don't do any praying. Oh, hey, I got to go to the store, y'all pray, and you, you never pray. You, you're a part of the worship and prayer. You don't let anyone take the Lord's meal for you where they chew the crackers and drink the juice for you. Why would you let anyone sing for you and you sit there and admire? Because you've been indoctrinated to think that that's the way it should be done. You say, well, we sing, Lord, see, you're singing by a thought that you can, but some people are so afraid of their mouth because the people next to them, we want to hear the choir. We don't want to hear you and your off note singing. So we want to hear the choir. And that's why the people don't sing. And you can sit and look around. They're not going to sing. They're not trying to worship God. They're listening to the audience. And the idea is that the person has to understand in denominational church, you can't even have a choir to sing because if you say and you're like, David, where's your instrument? Did you play anything? You said that you didn't play a piano. Is there a piano at every every station, at every chair? No. So you aren't even worshiping God by your own standard of error teaching. And that's what we're trying to do, audience, tell you. 
You have to honor God according to the scriptures. Each voice must sing. If you can't even do an audible singing, you sing from your heart. Because that's what the Lord is hearing, your heart. He's hearing the obedience in the heart. He's looking at the lifestyle that you're living and what you're thinking about while you're singing. So you have to participate. You can't sit there and say, oh, brother, so and so, sure can sing. That does nothing for you. Amen. And we implore you, audience, and beg and show the scriptures command that you are, as an individual, are to sing and glorify your Father. Thank, having thankfulness in your heart for what a wonderful God he is and what he has done for you and not watch someone else sing about that. You can do that while you're driving in your car sitting at home, but you're participating in the worship. Be a part of the worship or the Lord will not receive you. The number to call is 281-837. Before I talk to you about Harvey, yeah, I want to say this, Brother Ozan, and I want the radio to listen to this. There was no Christians in the Bible that worship God like the Baptists do today. Amen. Like the Catholic do today, like the yes. Methodists do today, yes. like the Presbyterian, like Lakewood, Bright Light, New Light, Potter's House, and the list is in it. There is no New Testament Christians that you find in the Bible that worship God like they are worshiping God today. Now, the number is 281-837-2222. I want you to call in. If you are so bold and, and you have the scripture, please call in and show us where we're in error. Yes. See, God has always been concerned about how we worship him. Yes. We don't choose how to worship God. God tells us how to worship him. Worship yes. is never about how we feel. It's about magnifying God. And God has always told us as humans, as mankind, how he is to be magnified. Yes. The number is 281-837-2222. Brother Javier. Thank you, Brother Henry. Even, even the structure, the structure in the Old Testament was different than it is today. In uh, 1 Chronicles 15, 16, it says, And David spake to the chief of the Levites. The chief of the Levites. Now, there are no more Levites that exist today. But Amen. he spoke to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music, psalteries, and harps, and cymbals sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. Now, they had a group called Levites. They were the only ones authorized to, to sing unto God. If you desired to do that work, you weren't you weren't able to do it because you weren't of the Levite priest. Yes. Now today you have no more Levites, but as Brother Henry read in First Corinthians 14, chapter 26, it says, "How is it then, brethren, when you come together? That's when everyone comes together. Every one of you have a psalm. It says, every one of you have a psalm. Every one of you have a doctrine, revelation, interpretation. So the scriptures detail every one of you. In verse 15 it says, "What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit." And I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understand it now with thy sayest. Now, when a brother gives thanks, when he is praying, there's only one brother praying at a time. There's not a multiplicity of brethren uh, praying at the same time. Amen. And so, by course. Exactly, by course, as verse 27 says, and so this is the order of worship. Now, the churches of Christ in some areas are copying the structure from other man-made organizations, and they are desiring to copy and put it into the church because of the flavor. They desire the flavor yes. that comes from the world. However, when you ask them where you got it from the scriptures, they have no scripture to give you because there's no New Testament example where they did those works uh, in the New Covenant. And they can't, even the Old Testament example of Levites, they can't go back to the Old Testament because why? We have no more Levites today. Amen. Amen. Number to call is 281-837-2222. Uh, I want to share that before our caller called us last week, we were about to answer. Uh, Henry had done a wonderful job uh, ex exposing the truth about the gospel and how you become a part of it. Uh, look at Galatians 3 quickly and 16. I'll toss it to all the brethren. Galatians 3 and 16, this is as far as we got before our call came. It says, Now to Abraham and his seed. Now listen, for well, the promise is made. Galatians 3 16. He saith, Not unto seeds as many, but one as to thy seed, which is Christ. Look at verse 17. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before the God, before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promises of another faith. So the law can't come in and, and, and apply its thought to Abraham's promise, the promise to Abraham and his seed. And the law was to keep us together until that seed, which is Christ, Amen. would come. Now look at, if you will, uh, verse 18. It says, For if the inheritance be of the law, 
It is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. So it's not of the law. Audience, hear me out. The promise is not of the law. It is the pre-law, uh, patriot law that it was given. It's not involved with Moses' law. You're wasting time trying to sing and dance like David and bring in sacrifices or going to, to Jerusalem three times a year or tithing. You're wasting time. Amen. Look at verse number 19. Wherefore, this serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions to the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Drop down to verse uh, number 24. It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified, listen, by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For you are the children of God, listen, by faith in Christ Jesus, not Moses' law, not tithing. Amen. No, not not being a priest as in the Catholic Church. No, ma'am, no, sir. Look at verse number uh, 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And this is how you can with the promise. Look at verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. Please listen, audience. Amen, bro. And as according to the promise. Audience, you cannot connect with faithful Abraham, who the promise was made to, and his seed, Jesus, unless you're baptized into Christ. Amen. If Amen. every baptism puts you into Christ, I'd like for someone to call 281-837-2222 and tell us, can you explain what happened in Acts 19, 1 through 5? Can you tell us why these men have to be baptized if every time you're told that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you are dipped in water, that just because someone said that and they dip you in water, that you're automatically saved if that person that spoke to you is not a member of the church. Their word has no power because the demons, according to Acts 19, verse 12, Father, do not fear a person without a weapon. And all non-Christians do not have the weapon. They have the words, but they have no, no weapon of power. It's like having a shiny chrome-plated gun with no bullets. No one's afraid of you. The number to call is 281-837-2222. And we're talking about the true children of Abraham. I don't know if uh, Brother Polk has some, but I want to read some verses. Because, you know, if you go back to the video that Javier has done wonderfully putting up on YouTube, yeah. we debated with this foolish organization called the Israel Knight United in Christ. Which these guys, if you go to their website, you'll see they have some foolish genealogy they didn't concocted to show if you're a certain nationality or ethnicity that you belong to a certain tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is foolishness. Because all those guys can do, because they don't have the spirit, is look at outer appearance. Amen. They want to judge things by the flesh. But the true children of Abraham, Paul explains in, in Romans chapter 9. Listen to this, Romans 9 and 6. He says, not as though the word of God had taken none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. This is New Testament Christian writing. He said, even though you were born an Israelite, you're not of the spiritual Israel, is what he's making reference to. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? So just because you're the seed of Abraham, don't mean that you are even when you were, that you are of the seed of promise. Exactly. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. See, the Israelite United in Christ try to make it a flesh issue. They try to make it an ethnicity issue, and they say, well, we're the children of God because the, if you're black, you're from the tribe of Judah. The Bible has just proven that argument is a lie. They have just tried to break the scriptures with that foolish doctrine, and the scriptures can't be broken. The flesh they said, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And so if you're going to be a true children of Israel, a true child of Abraham, you're going to be true Israel, you've got to be baptized into Christ and be added to the one church, the one body by Jesus that you read about in the scripture. The number is 281-837-2222. We have a call on the line? No, sir. No call on the line at this time. I'd like to toss it to Brother Polk. He's going to elaborate more on our subject. Brother elaborate Polk. a little bit more on what's going on here. You got people that want to play the instruments of days. You had people in the old that played instruments. But at one time, in Psalms 137, 1 through 9, it says, by the rivers of Babylonians, they sat down, yea, we weep 
when we remembered Zion. We hung our hearts up on the willows in the midst thereof, for there are they carried away us captive. We cried for us a song as a song, and they that wasted us required us to mirth, saying, Sing us one to the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Amen. He says, If I forgot thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget you heard coming, cunning. He said, I, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above the chief joy. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Brother uh, Amen. Uh, Pope for that reading. We have a caller on the line. At this time, we want to take the caller's Amen. question or comment. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Do you believe the elders to get paid? Okay, say that again now. Do you believe the elders to get paid? Elders should get paid. Well, according to the scriptures, uh, Paul says in 1 Timothy, I think, chapter 5, that they can, man. Yes. Uh, they do have, uh, there can be congregations uh, and uh, elders who could, uh, who are laboring, they're doing the work. Uh, Paul mentions, I believe, in 1 Timothy. Yeah, 1 Timothy 5. Yeah, that they are worthy of, 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 verse 17, that they are worthy of double He gives honor. a criterion, though. Uh, the scriptures say 5 and 17, and we're going to uh, read that. 5 and 17 is that the elders, this is what the this is what you're rule well, that's one. So that means there may be an elder that doesn't rule well and the congregation is working with him. Uh, the other leaders are working with him. He's still an elder, but he may not rule well. So that that, that will be probably one that will cause a lot of confusion on, on, on funds being given because a man may think he's ruling well or not. Uh, be kind of worthy of double honor. And it says, especially, remember, especially as a different group. This is a group that performs at a different level. They rule well. But they labor in the word and in doctrine. Why is that separation? Because if an individual is teaching and preaching as an evangelist would, because that's who we see according to the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9, who is required that they do not muzzle that ox, that's going to use the same term because you have some elders who were right here before Timothy got here and who, who he joins in with in work, they are already doing that work. So Timothy is instructed to tell the church you need to help them financially. Of course, this will be the ones that need help financially because they are obviously losing time with uh, private works or they have dedicated so much time that they're not able to make their ends meet because of the service to the Lord. But it says here uh, that uh, for the scripture said, Therefore uh, uh, they, thou shalt, forgive me, not muzzle the ox, that traded out the corn, and the laborer is worth of its reward. So this is the term that is applied to the elder who rule well and labors, and the word and uh, in doctrine. And so that that would be uh, the scripture. So because we have that scripture, and and if an individual uh, sees that going on, especially if a person having difficulty to carry out those duties, uh, it, it would be wrong for the church not to help the individual because, you know, I mean, that's what the money is for, to try to help a person survive as they're doing the work of the law and help the needs of the saints as well. Okay. Each time there's a question, that's audience, right. and we're encouraging you to seek this from the congregation okay. that you're at. If that is a situation, it should be allowed to be asked in a question form, and you should be able to receive an answer from the scripture. So the idea is remember that and, and judge the people you worship with by that standard. We leave the faithful saints of Romans 16, 16, the churches of Christ salute you. Yeah, that's why I don't like that because oh, when people, people they, yeah, 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 they write they it down. Yeah, they, just, they don't want to read it. Uh, Remember, my it, husband yeah. is being unfaithful. Mm -hmm. They want, well, look here, man, she, she, she might already came to y'all. You don't want to answer. Oh, yeah. You don't want to tap the church, but the church already told her if he's unfaithful <laughs> yeah. and you're not telling him nothing. He's already <laughs> told her from the yeah. floor. Well, we don't do no <laughs> call, man. Yeah, we don't deal with that either, yeah, man. Get a hold of Mike. Need, yeah. yeah. Say what you need to say. Yeah. yeah. Do that. Do that. Nah, sometimes I have people come up and say, hey, do you just, and it just depends on what it is. Now you need to go on. That's straightforward. Yeah, and they'll cut it. They don't want to read it all and just paraphrase yeah. so they can save time. But we don't need no paraphrase. What did she say? Because it might, it might be about them when they get it. You guys don't they might not want to read that. Uh -huh. Again, just they just on it. Uh, okay. they do not read it all. Okay. Folks, the provoke stuff. Yeah, to see you, Paul, you know, provoke some hearts. <laughs> this is good. We, can we talk about this again? Did you see all this thing? Man, that was good, Henry. How was y'all picnic? Oh, it was awesome, man. 
Yeah, I got your message, brother. God bless you. Yeah, yeah I was trying to pull out of Tennessee, probably. Y'all was eating hell, oh, really. Well, I'm trying to so you're yeah. Tennessee. How long were the drive with that? Uh, oh man, that's 11 and a half oh, hours. Oh, that's oh, that's if you don't, don't stop. Right, and man, we got I'm back sorry. about 4.30. We got to the house about 4.30, bro. Uh, wow. I don't for that, bro. God is good, though. We weren't going to let nothing stop us from church unless we'd have died on the road. That's about it.